What's up, desktopers? Xavier Wills here for Desktop Bodybuilding, and we are back with another episode of Bodybuilding University. Today, today I'm joined by Stuart Sutherland, IFB Pro, John De La Rosa, who just placed fourth at the 2024 Arnold Classic on the, the past weekend, just gone, and Dave Palumbo, obviously, of RX Muscle. John, I want to welcome you to the show. Obviously, first time appearing on uh, Bodybuilding University. Man, congrats, firstly, on placing fourth at the Arnold. How do you feel about the entire weekend as a whole? And how do you feel about the look you brought to the stage? I feel really good. Um, first and foremost, I feel very lucky and blessed to have been able to walk across that stage. Um, at this point in my career, I feel, uh, you know, when you're younger, you don't really see how uh, monumental these moments are. You're just kind of like chasing the title or wanting to do good. And, you know, um, so I felt really blessed that you know, after tearing my bicep, not knowing if I'd ever compete again, to be able to compete, not only to be able to compete, but compete at that level and, and do well was just all in all, man, I'm over the moon with the way things happen. Um, so very, very happy with uh, my look, the entire prep. It was just awesome. Whole thing. And so Stu and Dave, you, you both were there at the Arnold. Were you both watching the pre-judging end finals? Yeah, I watched. I, was, I watched everything. Yeah, I wasn't able to see the pre judge just the stream. Oh yeah, Dave. What what do you, what do you think? Obviously, of what John brought to the stage, and I think you were talking John up a bit as well uh, prior to the show. I know he's talking up um, Antoine a yeah. bit and and John. Yeah. Um, what do you think of John's look? Because I think it shocked most people. And John, like one thing that shocked me was like you turned to back and hit that back double bicep, and I'm like, you have no waist. Like you're not known as a guy that. Obviously, in your front double bicep, you just balloon out and you've got this crazy structure and shape. But from the back, it was like it was a different look to anything that I've seen before from you on stage. I, yeah, I, I wanted to say I was there, obviously, and I was watching. And first of all, I, I was not, I don't know why people are so surprised because John's been, John was really good last year. And John's been a, like a mainstay. He's won shows and gone to the Olympia multiple times. I think people just, I don't know, they just kind of count them out there or they forget. You know, they had the injury. Sometimes if you're out of sight, out of mind, you know, maybe sometimes people yeah. don't. I, I mean, John doesn't have any weaknesses in his body. And, and I knew the show wasn't like going to be, you know, stacked to the hill. Obviously, we lost a lot of top guys. And I said, you know, this is a real good opportunity because John is really complete. And if he brings conditioning, and I thought he'd look really good the last time I saw him on stage conditioning wise. I said, if he brings a little bit more and I knew he was really intent on coming back and showing people that he still had, you know, what it takes to be a top bodybuilder in the IPB. I said, I think he's going to shock a lot of people. I just, I, and I was looking at watching his progress pictures. I said, I think this guy is, is more dangerous than people really understand. I hadn't seen, the only pictures I really hadn't seen were of Rafa. So I figured, I felt that he could beat anyone in the lineup, but, you know, maybe with the exception of Samson and, and, and Hadi, but, and that's why I had him like, like, you know, in that top four position, because I said, that's the way I see it. And so he, I don't know why people were so surprised. I think, you know, I think he's always been there. I think people just didn't realize, you know, how close he was, you know? Yeah. Well, John, like, do you think this was your best ever package? I, yeah, I believe so. Um, I, I think in terms of uh, the way I presented um, the way that I felt, I mean, it's a whole, it's a whole thing, right? Like I, I think I looked really good in Toronto when I beat Ian. Uh, I forget what year that was, maybe 19 or 20. Condition-wise, I was really, really on. But I was also not as confident, so that doesn't display on stage. I think for this show, a big part of what transpired on stage was I, I wanted to go to war with these dudes. I wanted to show, like, you know what? These guys are good, but I'm good too. And you guys are going to see this, and you guys are going to take notice, and I'm here and I'm here to stay for a while. And I, and I, I felt that I felt every, I felt that every training session, every cardio session, I was just, I was there, man. I was like a hungry pit bull. Just get, couldn't wait to get up there and show what I got, you know? Yeah. I love it, man. You know, Zavi, like, I don't know if you guys know the story, but um, I've told it, uh, Chris Decido has told it on RX muscle a couple of times, but maybe your audience hasn't heard it, but you know, John, when he was first started competing, like he was a natural bodybuilder. And what, what were you competing at John? What was like the way, 172 pounds yeah <laughs> and and bob gruskin who we all know is like the guru of gurus you know back in the day like saw john at some show and he and he 
<laughs> told him he's like, you know, I, I I see you could be a top IFBB pro if you want one day. And John had like yeah. you know no muscle at that point, and you would never in a million years like looking at John know that. But Bob had such a good eye, you know, he knew yeah. that John had a really good structure and he was balanced, and uh, he said that right from the beginning. So you know, this yeah. this was no surprise. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny um john how why do your legs look so much bigger on stage like Stu, i don't know if you noticed that too but like the pre-contest like i heard a few people talking going john's legs aren't don't look big enough and then you stand on stage and then they look like perfectly balanced like what's the deal with that because i i don't know well like, I Stu, think, do you see I that think, sorry I think, yeah, john. Um, is that Stu? you were asking Stu or, or me oh i was gonna ask you but, but give, give oh, your answer because i want to know from you too well, I think like I'm not. I'm, I'm gonna hurt some feelings now, but uh, I'm just not the guy that like looks for perfect lighting, waits for the perfect pump. Like you could ask my wife; she gets annoyed because I'm like, I don't give a fuck. Post a picture. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what anyone else thinks that it looks like, you know. And all these uh, so-called experts and pundits, like, dude, I'll post a picture where I've literally been super low carb for ten pounds, look depleted and small and shriveled up. And I don't care. And then everyone's like, oh, well, his legs might look down. And uh, like, all right, okay, well, you know what? What matters is the, what happens, the, what, the look that I bring the day of the show. Not four weeks out, not six weeks out, not 10 weeks out, not the day before, the day of. And so I know I don't, I mean, I've never had small legs. So I find, I found it quite hilarious that people were like, oh, his legs look small. It's like, okay, well. My wife is also almost a foot taller than me and takes pictures downwards. <laughs> it doesn't help. Someone said that to me on our show. Like I was, when I was saying how good you good. I said, I don't know what you're talking about. John's got huge legs. I said, you can't go by pictures that are diet pictures. Cause like he's, he's carb depleted here. I said, so he has zero tan on too. I said, you know, you don't even know what you're talking about. I told him. Yeah. There's just, there's just so many factors. Like I said, I, again, I'm not the guy who, looks for the perfect lighting and and hits the hits it just right and then takes the picture just right and posts the best picture I don't care I don't care enough honestly what people think they don't the people's opinions don't pay my bills I do this because I absolutely love to compete I love to train I love to you know be in the gym and push myself and you know and, and I just don't care my my wife on the other hand was going nuts she's like oh why aren't they talking about you being the top five I, I, can't, I can't believe they don't see what I see I'm just so used to being the underdog and like, just, I got, I got too much of a thick skin and thick at this point to like care what people think about my progress pictures going into a show. <laughs> so are, are you one of these guys who like, you know, you kind of fill out right at the last minute, like before you yeah. get on stage. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you're, yeah, yeah you're like, not going to look that great running into it. So, and then you well, got I mean, guys like, like horse who, you know, posting crazy freaky stuff two weeks out I wasn't he's, not names, showing his, he's not showing he's not showing his glutes you know and it makes you scratch your head <laughs> yeah i mean listen if you're in shape going into a show you're not i mean dave will tell you this is very rare yeah. that you're gonna see a guy blasting full yeah, and peel. Exactly. It's, it's not gonna happen like you, he's gonna be yeah. flat in some areas and, and that's just the way it is like and but john Again, doesn't put filters john doesn't put filters on his pictures either i don't put filters <laughs> i don't I don't, and, and listen, it, the, my wife tries to like help me out with this because I just, I, I'm not, I'm not a social media guy. I don't care about what people think about my pictures. I don't filter them. I don't touch them up. I don't pinch here and pinch there and make this, but I don't, I post what you get. That's it. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> it, it just, um, which is what you yeah, should do. I, you know? Yeah. Like, listen, I'm not trying to pull the wool over anyone's eyes. Yeah. The truth is the day of the show everyone's going to see what you really look like anyways. So yeah. why cover it up by putting filters and waiting for the perfect lighting and the perfect angle and everyone, and, and, and not to, not to pick at people, but everyone had a lot of people ahead of me that have a million, two million followers on Instagram or YouTube. And they were the new hot thing going into a show and almost all their pictures were the perfect angle, perfect lighting, perfect, this perfect, that. Yep. and that fell flat you know and i'm not saying that that person doesn't have incredible potential they do it's just that 
at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how much you filter your pictures because when we're being judged on stage, you're going to be judged for what's there, not the perfect lighting, perfect picture, perfect angle. Don't, don't you think, don't you think though, John, too, that when you put pictures up that are actually better than you look, you're setting yourself up for 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 really because these judges watch all those pictures. You know they're going on your on your Instagram and looking at this stuff. And then they see you on stage and they're like, what happened to that guy on Instagram? You look terrible. Yeah. You must be out of shape. Well, they're getting yeah. the wrong impression about what you really look like. That's the problem. Yeah. You know? you, you, and that's you know, that's the problem with social media is that everyone it's everyone has made it a highlight reel. Like it, it for me, it just I just don't care enough to impress people that aren't paying my bills like i said i mean whether you like my pictures or not or you think my legs are big or my arms are big or i'm not big enough overall or my condition is good or bad it doesn't pay my bills at the end of the day when i get on stage if i'm beating some of the top guys in the world that's going to help me pay my bills hmm. yeah. and, and dude the thing is as well with social media like even mentioning it from every standpoint you mentioned it's like a highlight reel I, i've seen like people on social media playing happy family, like family Christmas photo together. And then I hear like a story about like, oh yeah, she's sleeping with the boss and he's fucking these two other <laughs> girls. They both know about it. <laughs> and then they're fighting over kids and and whatever, like whatever stories there might be. And you just see this family photo together and you're like, that, no, nah, that ain't right. And, and the longer we've had social media, the more I see that sort of stuff yeah. and the more I'm disillusioned with it. I'm like, I know when I'm going to start posting more stuff again, it's like, it's just going to be what it is. It's not going to be some. Yeah. And, it, very and it's sad too, because a lot of people do it. A lot of people do that stuff for, for acceptance to try to like feel accepted or, or loved and cared by, by, by people that again, I mean, if somebody on the, on, on Instagram is like, Oh, you could be in better condition. Like, okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, great. thank you for your input uh, make sure i'll be on stage and in shape on stage like that's what matters but people care so much about posting a bad photo that everyone's gonna like see what they really are like or, and it's like i don't know i just i can't get with the filtering and the the shadows and the pictures and the mirrors and i don't know you get what you get when you when you go on my instagram <laughs> <laughs> it's funny i remember brandon curry this was like days before i don't know which olympia it was but we were chatting quite a bit and it was maybe like the 2021 mr olympia or 2020 i can't remember which one but he was leading right. into that and i remember there was like a photo leaked of him and it was i think it was by his coach and it accidentally sort of got out there and then people were comparing that photo because it wasn't like a you know catered to anything it was like a progress sort of one and then that was being compared to guys that were like 16 for me Olympia. And he's obviously like the current, like top two in the world. And he's just sending me <laughs> voice notes. He doesn't care whatsoever. He sent me voice notes, just cracking up about it. He's like, man, this page, he's like, they're just comparing me to <laughs> like, and he was just crying, laughing, laughing. I'm yeah. like, you can tell the people out there that like it impacts negatively. Like they'll like, they'll take, they'll be like disrespecting me, you know, and get really angry about it. And it's like, yeah. you've got to take the brand and curry John De La Rosa approach of like, who gives a shit? Like, because at the end of the day, you don't know who that person is. And that person probably has never achieved one tenth of what you've achieved in any area mm -hmm. of life. So it's yeah. like, who's really talking, you know? Who's yeah. opinion? Well, you know, I had a, I had an interesting comment on one of my, uh, I put one of those question things on my Instagram today and it was interesting. Um, somebody said, uh, do you think it's realistic for you to uh, win the Olympia one day? And my response to that was, well, no one thought it was realistic that I placed top five, except for a handful of people at this Arnold. But <laughs> I believe I believed it was realistic and I accomplished. So, I mean, it doesn't really matter what anyone thinks. If you can put your mind to something, you can do it. Um, if you get caught up in the weeds and, you know, start caring about what everyone else thinks, then I would have never made top five, you know, because I would have believed that, oh, well, no one else thinks I could do it. So then your effort in the gym isn't as great. Your effort in cardio isn't as great. You're not following your diet as strategically and smart and strictly. You know what I mean? Like there's a lot of all of those things fall into that. So I think it's just put the blinders on. Stop caring about what everyone else thinks about you. And get Get to work. Following up on that same, that's what you said, just said, John, if you remember, remember when Branch Warren, I think it was, I forget what, what year it was, where he came in second at the Olympia. Mm. People said Branch Warren could never win the Olympia. People said Branch Warren could never win the Arnold. He won, you know, two Arnolds, 
<laughs> he, yeah. he almost won the Olympia. If Jay wasn't there, he would have won, you know, yeah. because that guy yeah. worked so freaking hard in the gym. And he did not care what people thought about his physique or if he had good structure yeah. or not. And, and he yeah. just showed up at his best every time. And I mean, that's, that's all you can do. So, yeah, that's all we have control over. And, and listen, I, I'm not saying that I didn't fall victim to caring. You know, I remember several years when I was younger, like, you know, being beat by guys. I'm like, man, why can't people say like, like, see that I'm good too. And like, you know, I just always kind of almost felt like I was getting outshined, you know, like, and, and I it would frustrate me. And now I'm just like, man, man I, don't, I don't care. <laughs> you know, I'm going to bring the best that I can bring. And I think, and I do believe in my heart that is worthy of being one of the top guys of the world. Um, and that's what I'm, that's all I'm focused on right now. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, obviously, it's good because we've got like three different people. Like Dave, obviously, you're like retired now from competing. We've got John, who's like been competing for many years as a pro. And we've got Stu, who's obviously a, a newer pro now as well. So it's cool. We can get the perspective of Stu as well. So like Stu, do you get or have you been imp impacted by like social media and what people say online and all that sort of stuff? And does it like, affect you now? Did it affect you? Um... I don't take it as... I wouldn't, I wouldn't think, I don't see you as a person who lets it affect you. No, not really. I mean, for the, I've been surprised for the most part, I mostly get, you know, positive feedback on social media with the exception of like a couple pages that like, you know, repost pictures. There's a couple of them that like, by no fault of the person who runs it, the, the fans are just shit. Um, but yeah, you know, it, I, I think I, I kind of find it a bit entertaining you know, it's, you know, sometimes people have really good insults and jabs and, you know, the clever shit, right? So that's, that's fun to like, you know, read through comments and see if they get you real good. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't, different from John, like I, well, actually not so different. Like I know that all I can do is show up in shape and see where the, the, the cards fall or, you know, see where the chips land or whatever the saying is. Um, I mean, I, I don't really put like expectations on myself because i know the judging and who shows up to the show is like out of my control um i don't even like doing predictions for for shows for other people because i mean as we saw this last weekend uh, people are super inconsistent uh sometimes they hit it out of the park and then sometimes i mean i don't, I don't know anybody who had marcello out of their I, I, it seems like i'm harping on marcello i don't mean to but like um it i don't i don't know anybody who had him outside of the top five at that show uh i did and i think he is yeah you did i, I think i'm very actually, few but yeah yeah I, um the but you know the the hype train is is real on some of these guys and as john said it sometimes it doesn't translate so um yeah you know just kind of like I, I try to just have fun with it you know enjoy the banter uh, and the shit talk if if when it when it comes comes around um going into a show but it i mean i'm I'm still just doing exactly what my coach tells me to do so it's not affecting me mentally um so yeah good approach yeah. yeah definitely now john i want to ask you about this i'll bring up a video of it just in just a second now at the finals of the arnold classic akeem williams moved from placing seventh at the pre-judging to fourth at the mm -hmm. finals. And when I saw you not in that final four call out at finals, I was like, whoa, like what's sort of going on here? And a lot of people were really confused how then Akeem didn't place fourth because why are they comparing him? Now it's obviously a combination of pre-judging score and final score. How were you feeling though when Akeem was called out and you weren't in that call out when you was at the side of the stage? At, at first, I... I got to admit, I was like, this. so I knew Akeem looked better, right? I, and he, he did come back much better on a, on Saturday night. But I was kind of shocked that they put him at, in the four spot and didn't even give me the opportunity to compare. You know, that's, that's more of where I was like, uh. but then I was like, well, as I was sitting there thinking, I was like, well, they can't just move him into the four spot because he was in the seven, eight spot. So he's maybe in the four spot here for prejudging, but he's not going to be able to make up the points. 
So then I just kind of sat back after a moment of panic and was like, oh, so whatever it is, what it is, you know? Yeah, for sure. And it, it makes for an interesting battle this weekend because Akeem's going to the UK, isn't he? And you're going to the UK. And then we've got Samson going to the Arnold mm-hmm. UK as well. And Samson's obviously had a, a few little issues um, in terms of, you know, he said it feels like his body's failing him and all those sorts of things. Now he's messaged me and said, I'm in, I'm in the Arnold Classic UK, you know, I'm back on it now sort of thing. But it sounds as though his body is pushing back on him a little bit. And obviously now as well, I don't know who's going to coach him for these final two weeks, whether it's yeah. Marlena or his partner or what, but it just sort of maybe leaves the door a bit of a jar because people were comparing Raf to Samson and people were comparing yeah. you to Raf. So when you sort yeah. of go like that, do you, do you, are you going into this Arnold Classic UK thinking you can win it? So the strategy for Patrick and I going into finals, um, I, I, I don't know what you guys are, what your guys' opinion are, the way you saw it, but I, I think I was clearly one of the harder, more separated guys in the show from behind. Um, and so one of the ideas that we had was like, okay, well, we have a little conditioning to like, kind of give up um, because they're clearly putting Rafa in the three spot because he's a little fuller, you know, he's a bigger person. So we wanted to give up a little bit of conditioning, come in a little bit fuller, um, which I still think was a great look. I think Friday was a better look for us. So the idea of going into UK was we're, we're going to try and, and we already know what the difference was between Friday and Saturday, The Literally the only difference uh, between Friday and Saturday um, was that six hours before we hit the stage on Friday, we were doing 100 mLs of water every hour. On Saturday, we had kept it every half hour. So I just had a little bit more fluid going into Saturday night finals. So we're going to go back to the way we did it on Friday night. If everything continues to go well, that's how we're going to keep it. Obviously, we'll make adjustments as we go along. But um, the idea is to just... I, I don't think that Samson is going to be able to catch the conditioning that I'm at right now. I'm even sharper than I was last Friday. I've continued to diet. So I think I'm going to be better conditioned. Um, and I'm not ever going to catch him on size. So it would be stupid to try and be blown out full. So I'm just going to try to beat him on condition. If, I, if I'm in that two spot, I'm going to try to out condition him. I think I have the shape, you know, I have, I have the muscularity to, you know, kind of hang with them. So we'll see. We'll see what the judges think. Does, I think does, you know, John, real- I have a question for you, John. Does it bother yeah. you when you see guys like beat you who um, are not conditioned as 100%. well? Because, you know, if, if you came in like that, they would they would put you last probably. They'd say, oh, John's out of shape um, as a competitor. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if you talk to the other guys. Is it like frustrating to see someone like Samson who's out of sh- who really didn't, was kind of smooth from behind, especially beat you guys when, when he wasn't? 100%. Hundred percent. I mean, even Rafa, like everyone had me in the three spot that I spoke yeah. to, beating Rafa because of conditioning. And yeah. so the the frustrating part for me is that you know my entire career is like, oh, John just bought crazy conditioning. John just bought crazy conditioning. <laughs> okay, well, I bought crazy conditioning, and then you know, and still, listen, I'm grateful for the placing that I got. I still think I did really good, but you know, it's it's confusing at times because it's like, okay, well, I don't. I, I think I'm pretty complete. I don't, I, I think Rafa has a very beautiful physique. Um, I think comparatively, I think I have a pretty physique as well. Um, I'm not missing anything. I don't think Rafa isn't missing anything. So I think when you start to look at things in those, in, in, the, in those categories, okay, the body, you know, shape is pretty on both ends. So it's a tie there. Uh, maybe you want to give that to, to Rafa. Uh, we're not missing any body parts. We're, you know, we all we we have pretty similar physiques, but I'm in better condition. Yep. You know, yeah. so it didn't go that way, and 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 that's okay. You know, the judges have reason to place them where they place them. You know, it's a, it's an objective sport. That's that's something that I have to keep reminding people. It's like, listen, the judges see what they see, and that they have the reason to place them where they place them. It's just for me. It's like Dave said, if that had been me. If I showed up as smooth as Rafa did from behind, I would have placed last. You mean uh, Samson? Samson. Or Rafa. Yeah, yeah. Rafa, well, was, Rafa just... was a little tighter than Samson, I think. But, you know, yeah. yeah. But I, I think if, yeah. if any of you guys in the top five, aside from 
Samson would have looked like Samson, I think they would have they would have penalized you much oh, more. Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. And John, yeah, I didn't I think even really. It seems like they're Sorry, they're just kind of they're they're allowing guys to uh, come with that kind of condition and still place well more recently. Yeah. Um, like yeah. in the last couple of years, uh, they they're going for you know shape guys and fullness guys and uh, not even necessarily muscularity because uh i mean obviously that helps but like you're plenty muscular as well you know and you've got shape uh, I, the only thing i could think of that rafa has over you is like overall structural size because he's like he's nice. a little taller yeah. than you yeah um, yeah but i mean pound for pound like not really more muscular um right it, i mean yeah as, as a competitor it's it's confusing uh and and yeah. annoying right especially if you're one of these guys like I mean, like, you know, I look at my physique, like, I'm not put together like Rath, Rafa here or or Samson, right? So what can I do? I can get bigger and get leaner. But if they're not rewarding that, then that kind of sucks. I'm still going to do yeah. that, right? And show up as good as you can. Um, but it's that it seems to be the way the winds are blowing. Yeah. Don't you, think, no dude, don't you think shape, they kind of judge know? what's up there? I think they just yeah. they have to judge what's up there. Sometimes there's just nothing to pick from, and they and they have to go with a guy who's maybe not in the best shape. At this show, there was a lot of guys in good shape. That's why I was surprised yeah. that they still rewarded Samson for not being in shape. You know. Yeah, well, yeah. you know what's been up there the last couple of years has been guys like Samson and guys like Andrew, who have insane muscularity and structure, and you know they're beautiful looking physiques, but. They, I mean, yeah. Again, like if if I looked like that condition wise, I'd be an amateur. So, <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> it's it's not it's acceptable if if you're good enough in all these other departments. Uh, I'm not personally really a fan of that, um, but uh, that's that's coming from me selfishly and also as like a more hardcore fan of the sport. Um, you know, diced up glutes and hams don't necessarily appeal to the casual fan of the sport. And they're going to be like, yeah, he's super shredded here, you know, because they don't. And maybe that's what they're trying to appeal to more, you know, put a put a very pleasing physique on top, um, even if he's not quite there, as we're seeing here, you know. Mm. As bodybuilding fans, I think we just want to see more, you know what I mean? Just that like with Samson. We don't need to see him like inside out. We just need that little bit more. And I think as fans, they think like Samson isn't pushing or something. Samson's obviously pushing himself. Like you, you can tell Samson he's he was drained. Like that video he did after the Arnold. Whether yeah. I mean, Dave, what do you think? Do you think that Samson like needs a break, or what? What do you think the issue is for Samson? I, you know, I, I I hate speculating, but people like seem to like when I speculate, and and I I think what what happened was I think that they. I don't think Samson needs a lot of carbohydrates to really fill out. He's the guy's never flat. I've never seen him flat. And I think when you jam too many carbs into him, he, he spills very easily. And then what I think the, the, the inclination to do is give him diuretics, right? Pull that water out, but you know, you can't pull water out of a muscle when it's too filled up, you know, it just doesn't come out of the right places. And, 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 and I think he was exhausted and, and de depleted because he, I think he probably, did more water depletion than he's ever done in an attempt to really get that hard, dry look. But I think the problem was that he was just, I think he was just too filled up. And, and, I, and I don't think you can deplete that glycogen out of the muscle when it's just overfilled. He probably would be better. You know, some guys just look good, like 50% carved up, you know? Some other guys need full, fully 100% glycogen saturation. You can't put another gram of carbs into their muscles. And if you don't do yeah. that, they look flat, but other guys really just their lines show better when they're, when they're not completely filled up. And I think that Samson's one of those guys. I think he doesn't need to be fully carved to look his best on stage because his, his aesthetics are so good that, and his lines are so good that he actually looks better, a little depleted. That that's just my you know opinion. And then, you know, yeah. yeah, I think for Sam, I mean, he's so pretty, he's got so much muscle. I think it's just going to take the right formula and, and, once he does that, I mean, it's, he's going to be unstoppable. Um, but yeah, I just, uh, he definitely missed the mark here for whatever reason. I, I don't, I don't really know what the reason is. I don't know if he overcarbed or he's just tired and, or, 
know, his body was kind of already given up on him. Who knows? I mean, the guy's been competing. I think the other thing people forget is he's been competing nonstop for the last two years. You right. know, he's 13 not- shows. <laughs> 13 shows under um, Mil Sachev. So it was 13 shows in, I think, two and a half years. That's a lot yeah. of shows. And I mean, it's a lot of time as well to figure out the, the conditioning thing as well. And it, it's so. yeah. it's never got to that point where, because everyone's saying to, to Milos, you see it on podcasts and everything, just bring him in condition. And I think Milos, in, in a way, is smart enough to know that, you know, sometimes we see guys, you know, go with coaches and then they say, bring him in condition. And they will just flatten them. You know what I mean? Just absolutely wipe them out. And then they have no pops. So they may look like they're in the same condition sometimes. But I think right. Mills is smart enough to know, like, hey, Samson can't just come in small. Like, you hear I've, one thing I really disagree with what Bob Chicarello says. He says, bring Samson in at like 270. I'm like, he's 300 on stage. I don't think 270 is going to look good. I think that'd be too far. But, you know, the five to 10 pounds down, if he can, yeah. you know, if that can come from conditioning, but sometimes it comes from fullness as well. But, yeah, it, Milos obviously. loves glycogen loading, and we know his whole protocol. Yeah. Him and I we debated it. He he believes in fully glycogenating the muscle with insulin and, and carbs, and and that and it works on a lot of people. But on other people, it just it makes their it just bloats them out, and it just ruins their aesthetics. And I think that that's just the case with with, with Samson. I think that's the problem. But you know, we'll find out. You know, when he uh, moves on to someone else, who do you, he has a good question? Who do you think he'll go to? That's what I was about to ask. Literally literally what I was about to ask. Uh, A lot of people say, are saying in my comments, because I've sort of like looked at the comments and seen a lot of people were saying Honey Rambod, but Honey Rambod obviously only works with Evigen athletes unless it's Chris Bumstead. (laughs) So, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Even if he was an athlete, he wouldn't work with him, I don't think. What's up, Stan? He's already got the top two guys. What does he need him for? I, I think <laughs> I think Chris Aceto would be a good good match for him, to be honest with you. Dead. Yeah, I mean, it, Chris is definitely a, a condition guy. Um, someone you guys, uh, John and Stan, work with Patrick Tour. He'd be a, a great guy for Samson as well because he's definitely known as one of those condition guys too. What do you guys <clears throat> think about that? I was, I was just about to say. I think. I mean, I know, I know, uh, Hani would probably bring him to that next level. Um, but I know Hani wouldn't work with him um, because of the old Evagen thing. Um, and maybe he would, who knows? I don't know. But I think if he, if Patrick were able to get his hands on him, I, I just, and, and this isn't like, because I'm with Patrick, this is because I've seen how Patrick works and how involved he is and how much he cares and uh, how, we've taken notes over the last two years. Like the dude brings out things like, oh, this is what we did, you know, peaking for the Chicago Pro. This is what we did for t- peaking for Tampa. This is what we did picking, peaking for the show. As I just told you, we know, we already know what the difference is between Friday look and Saturday look and how we're going to change that. Like he's just so involved um, that I think, you know, maybe a show or two, he'd figure out how to get Samson really dialed in and we might, we might see the best in, you know, the reason I say Chris is because I, I say, look at Sean Roden, look at Cedric McMillan. He's worked with guys that have similar physiques to, 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 to Samson and a similar look and similar problems, you know, getting in shape. So I, I think that that would be a good fit for him because of that. True. True. Yeah. Absolutely. Chris is yeah. also a phenomenal coach. Yeah. Who do you think is true? Yeah. I, I think probably Patrick or Chris. Um, do do I think that they're the best fit? I, I can't really comment. I haven't worked with them. I don't know a whole lot about what they do. Uh, but yeah, it, it'll be a big name for sure. We know that. <laughs> it's always it's always gotta be some something in the news for us to talk about <laughs> who, who he's going with next. Yeah, there'll be lots of gossip afterwards and <laughs> it's crazy how this has become that, right? Like we we talk about everything to do with everything on the table. Like, oh, he's going with this. <laughs> It's kind of a boring it. sport, man. Like, maybe he'll do his own diet. Talk about maybe something. he'll do his own diet. Yeah. No, I don't think he'll do as well. I think Steph- Stefan, Patrick, someone in the in, in Europe would be great for him. Someone that could travel to him and really have his yeah. hands on him. Yeah, Stefan, Patrick, 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 UK was with James a lot, and like that worked that worked out great for them. That was James' best ever look. Doing that like British Grand Prix and then the Europa, I think it was the one Big Rami was meant to compete in to qualify for the first Olympia he won. That that was the best James ever looked because he was just like bursting full, 
conditioning was there. Like there was nothing wrong with that look at all. And people were talking about James potentially being top six in that Olympia, which he never obviously competed in because of the whole COVID thing. So mm. if he can regain that sort of form, like at this contest, James was, it, it's funny because it's hard to see on the webcast because he was actually really dark and the, the lighting at the actual fi- uh, the main stage was a little bit darker than the expo. I actually found the expo lighting to be like next level for the classic guys from the pre-judging. But James, for me, he looked more conditioned weeks out from the contest. And John, I don't know if you saw, he was training like ballistically with Branch Warren like four days out of the Arnold Classic. And I was like, is that going to cause some inflammation? I don't know if that had anything to do with it. But um, yeah. it, I just wonder if that last minute prep um, just didn't work for James for some reason. But he's still obviously top five of the Arnolds. And I, I messaged him, I said, that's an incredible achievement, man. Like, don't don't get lost in that. You beat some phenomenal bodybuilders there as well. And um, he was obviously a guy you were up there with, John. So what, what did you think of James and what sort of interaction did you have with him backstage? I, I love James. James and I talk a lot on Instagram and we message each other on WhatsApp and stuff. He's a very good dude, somebody I connect with very well. Um, we've been friends. I mean, he came to my gym and trained, trained there for a few days as well when he was here uh, working with uh, the company in Boca, uh, Redcon. Uh, so, you know, him and I have been friends a while. We had a great time backstage. You know, he was, there was a moment where I can see he was just like uh, nervous. You know, he was like, just kind of like deer in headlights look, you know, and I said, you're all right, bro. And he's like, yeah, just, you know, I don't know how it look. I said, work's done, man. Have fun, have fun. Like we're here, that's it. Like the, the more you think about it, the, the, you ain't going to do anything good. So just have fun. And it was weird. I remember it was a moment that like, I was like, man, it's weird because I remember being super nervous. And now like after turning my bicep and being able to compete at that that show and, and that level again, I was just so happy to be there. And I wanted him to be happy too. I was like, bro, have fun. Like we're here, man. We made it. We're amongst the best in the world. Like, look at the stage, look at the lights, look at, you know, fucking awesome. And uh, later on he had thanked me. He's like, man, thank you so much for that. Like you really kind of helped me out there. So yeah, I mean, we have a great relationship. He's a good dude. We're going to be hanging out uh, when I get out to Birmingham next week. Oh, awesome. That'd be cool. As there's um there's some other names to mention as well that could be potential coaches of Samson Data going forward. Uh, these are people that people have suggested in the comments uh, on YouTube. Neil Hill was one that came up a whole ton. Uh, mm-hmm. Chad Nichols. Uh, Stu, I know you suggested your coach, Blue Taylor. You said that he would work really well with him. Uh, we mentioned Harney. Matt Jansen as well. AJ Sims, he's obviously known as being a conditioning guy as well. So there's there's tons of coaches out there. There's tons I'm forgetting off the top of my head as well. But is there any other names that you guys see there that you think would would also suit Samson based off, you know, what, what do we know? We don't know where protocols and stuff like that, but we all sort of hear things over time. Yeah. Basically, just um, named all of them, dude. <laughs> <yep. laughs> no, I mean, out of, out of those guys, is there any extra guys like Matt Jansen or any of... Anyone else that you think would work well um, with Samson? I think just anyone really like that specific, like the specialty of like conditioning. I think that's what he needs because he's have no no issue with fullness whatsoever. Right. So he just yeah, I, one that I, really I tell people, you know, when I worked with Tony Freeman back in the day, Tony was a guy <laughs> that couldn't eat carbs. You give him one carb meal, mm. you know, like the day of the show or maybe one the night before, and he was full of the house and round and, and separated. If you gave him like six carb meals. <laughs> then he, he smoothed out. And I, I don't know, I don't understand why, but you know, when you talk about, I think it's important to understand that guys are genetic freaks, okay? They're genetic freaks for a reason because their bodies don't respond like everyone else's. They'll build muscle on like on like 100 grams a day of protein. You know, they'll, you, you see these guys on the street drinking beers and they, and, they, and they have fucking tons of muscle in their body and they, they eat no protein. So Michael you're Lockerstone. talking about like, like, you're talking about a genetic animal that like doesn't respond you know, to the normal biological, you know, certainties that we know, eating a lot of protein, doing this, that, and that. So a lot of times you have to be a creative coach to work with someone like that because you have to figure out their body. You're not going to plug it into your template that you use with most, uh, with 90% of the people that you work with and have it work because he's not a, he's not a typical person. His body likes to build muscle. It doesn't like to, it doesn't like to deplete or lose muscle or fat. 
And so you have to figure out techniques. And usually with guys like that, at least in my experience, especially working with Tony and Akeem <laughs> over the years, is you have to feed, you have to starve them for, for a couple of days, but then you have to feed them. You can't do anything consistently because if you do something consistently, their bodies adapt because what their bodies are adept at doing is, is not losing anything. They, their bodies want to hold. They want to hold. That's why they're such so hyper-muscular. And so you have to play around constantly with, with the diet, changing it constantly. And that seems to work. And so as, if you're a creative thinker, I think those will be the coaches that will, will work best with him. And that sounds good. Yeah. Asilo would be great for sure. Yeah. Different yeah. things outside the box. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I'm I'm curious if any of you guys know what his contest preps look like, because I mean, you know, so, some guys will like share on YouTube exactly what they're eating throughout the course of the day. Like, is right. Samson eating fish and green beans for six weeks, or <laughs> like is he <laughs> having weekly cheat meals? I know for a fact he doesn't eat fish. He refuses to eat fish. Oh, uh, really? Interesting. It, it, huh. I don't. I imagine because he just doesn't like it, which I mean, right. you're fucking third place in the world, dude. To eat the fish. Um, you eat the fish. <laughs> you know, <laughs> even if it doesn't work, would eat like it week, might. Eat fish and veg. Yeah, you know, I know Sean Roden used to just. I, I remember uh, Chris. I think it was on your show, Dave. He was talking about like yeah. when he prepped him for that Olympia. He was like yep. two, three weeks on like forty grams of carbs or something. Yeah, and, uh, was he was. Pro- that was the whole he was prep. Talking to... <laughs> the whole prep, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And then you know, he, I think was he a, talked a, to a his. I, th- I think he like he was talking to his uh, training partner or something. I forget who. And he was like, "I think you're going to get a burger today." He's like, "Yeah, I hope so." And then he got one the, the next day or something like that. Well, Stan was I, there with him, so you know. Was that okay? It yeah. was me, but yeah. you thought he was going to have a refeed, so he was looking forward to it. And then uh-huh. it happened the refeed. He called me. He was like. We were on our way to the gym. I was like, can you do me a huge favor? I was like, yeah, what's up? Can you pick up the biggest apple you can find? <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> that's what I like, gave him, like a big apple. That was pre-workout. Because <laughs> he was eating like a quarter cup of oats for like 12 weeks. A pound of fish every meal. Yeah. No problem. Yeah, so, so like that works, right? But I don't know if Samson's ever done that. I know Milos sure. is pretty big on carbs and insulin, generally yeah. speaking, right? So... You see a guy with conditioning issues, you see a coach who loves insulin, and you're like, why? You know, um, <laughs> if worse for some people, probably not for him. Um, right. I, 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 again, I, I'm speculating like we love to do because we don't know what he's eating every day. But, you know, sometimes this stuff is a case of like, you know, like Akeem. Akeem literally has to eat thin air. I know a couple of people who yep. know him pretty good. And like, yeah, you coach him before, Dave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I coached so, him for yeah. many years. Yeah, many years. Yeah. You're like he, six he, ounces he, of protein and just nothing, you know? He has the same issue that Samson's got. He's got a crazy, freaky metabolism that loves to grow muscle. And people mm-hmm. who like to grow don't like to let go. There's, there's a little crime you can remember. but So you have to starve him. But you can't starve him too long because then his body adapts and he doesn't lose any more weight. And then so you have to mm-hmm. starve him, feed him, starve him, feed him, starve him, feed him. And and that's what seems to work. And you know, Chris is working with Akeem now, so Chris has got that down pat. Akeem looked really good at the night show. I don't know what was off about him at the pre judging Now, remember, Chris had to leave because his mom passed away, so you know he wasn't there to really see Akeem. But Akeem was a little flat, I thought, at pre judging, which is why he was in seventh. And I thought he looked really good on um, on Saturday night. But you know, you can't make up that kind of those points if you come in seventh at the pre-judging. So I think we'll probably see a much better Akeem in, 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 at the UK. Yeah, and, you know, Akeem was uh, arguably in better condition than Samson was. Uh, oh, we he ever say was. Yeah, you yeah. know, when do we absolutely. ever say Akeem is harder than anybody, you know? It's always his issue. <laughs> it's really says yeah. something, you know? Um, yeah. So it, without knowing what the hell Samson's doing right now, whether, you know, during the prep or during the peak, you'd – don't really know what coach is going to be the best fit, but probably somebody right. who's going to watch him close, make him suffer if he's the willing, and, <laughs> and and you know, make it happen. Um, I feel bad for Akeem because literally, like his side leg will sometimes look harder than anyone's, and then he's got other areas of his physique that look softer than anyone's on stage, and it's like, how does that work? I'm like, that would be so frustrating. Like having, like you'd see yourself from the front. And you'd look at your side leg and go, yeah. And then you'd get some photos from her back and go, oh, it's just not there. But I will say, Akeem, when he pulled his elbows back this time, 
he had the lines coming through in his lower back. Like they were sort of thicker and it's not as hard as like, you know, New John or some of these other guys. But I was impressed. So he was obviously suffered under Chris to to get down to that. He he has very, very, very high attached lats, which are mm. okay on the lat spread from behind because he has width. But on the double bicep, if he's not perfectly dialed in, you know, it look he looks like he has no back. Like he he looks like he's missing like his middle back. And that's what I I didn't see that middle back in the prejudging. And then all of a sudden at night show it was like poof, it was popping out. And like you said, you saw his you saw it with the little the attachments that were down low and everything was popping out. And that's that's what he needs because he doesn't have there's not a lot of space where he has muscle because he's his lats attach up so high. And he's got a teeny tiny waist, luckily. So it, it kind of compensates for it. But yeah, he has to be perfectly dialed from behind. Otherwise, he's going to lose that back double bicep, you know. Yeah. But that exactly. must be like a blood flow restriction or something. Like why you can't get that mid back dialed in as as much. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely it's strange. Question. Now, I want to um, bring this up. I'm trying to share my screen for some reason. It's not even giving me the option anymore. But I'll try to do it while we're talking about it. But there's apparently Mr. Olympia posted this sort of just over the Arnold Classic weekend, um, or at least just after it said major Miss Major Olympia documentary announced. And then it says as it's uh, 60 years celebration approaches, and then it goes on about it. It's going to be directed by Vlad Yudin from Generation Iron. Fuck. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering if anyone was going to say anything about that, Ben. But Stu, I'll start with you, man, because you, <laughs> you you let it be known. Uh, what do you think about this? I'll try to bring it up so you guys can at least see it while we, we're talking about it. The problem with the Generation Iron folks is like, you know, they they make movies for normies. And like us as serious bodybuilding fans and serious bodybuilders, we're like, everything is so surface level. You know, when, when they were, I remember the first Generation Iron movie, it's like, it's cool to see all the guys competing, right? But like, I mean, there's so much more stuff that they could go into. Uh, and uh, and honestly, like, I don't know what this is going to look like. Are they going to follow guys around, training for the Olympia, do day in the life kind of stuff? Or, or, or Probably. But, uh, I mean, is it going to look like the original Generation Iron? Um, I just know that, like, I talked to Branch about him. You know, obviously, they portrayed Branch as kind of a jackass in that movie, and he's not. Um, oh, he hated that, yeah. Yeah, you know, he was he was pissed, you know. Um, so you know, if they're if they're gonna start playing games with fucking around with stuff again, like they did in that first one, I, I, the second one, or the third one, I don't even know what they were about. I don't think it's important. But uh, you know, it, I, I I don't know. It's I'm sure it'll be great though because it's the official IFBB thing. So yeah. <laughs> Well, they're yeah. just, they're, all that means is that they're giving him access to the Olympia to shoot it. That's all that means. Yeah. It, it'll be very interesting to see how it sort of comes out because it does mention a, a bit down here about, it says, uh, the Olympia is also a commerce gateway to a multi-billion dollar world of nutrition where top brands, startups, major celebrities, and serious fitness enthusiasts come together. So I'm wondering how much they actually cover of like the fitness enthusiasts and the, the the popular Instagram people and stuff, they feature compared to the bodybuilding portion of it. Like, is this going to be like something where they shoot a ton of the expo and then shoot, you know, when, because it mentions about Vegas as well. So this is obviously for next year's Mr. Olympia or access for oh, this year's Mr. Olympia rather. So is it going to be following guys up the strip, bodybuilders with their shirt off or something like that? Like, what's it actually going to be? Because I hope it's done right, you know? Yeah. For the 60th anniversary, though, don't you think that they should be like interviewing people who've seen, who are still covering the sport, who are still competing in the sport, maybe retired guys who did Olympias, like guys like Victor Martinez and Jay, and and talk about the, the historical significance of the sport, because that's really what it's about. It shouldn't just be about this coming Olympia. It should be yeah. about all the Olympias, and they should be sh showcasing people from different generations that competed at these Olympias. Because luckily, a lot of those guys are still alive, and 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 get like a, a sixty year perspective on it, and then end with the with the current crop of guys that are currently competing, and then you know oh, make yeah. that the the, you know, the the crescendo of the show. But I think you have to have a historical perspective, or it's just another generation iron, you know, um, yeah. like they did for the last one. I like that, Dick. The good way to do. It. I Thank think you. that's the best way to do it. <laughs> 
Yeah, no. I, and they I, might I, be I totally doing it. I don't surprised. know how they're doing it. I'm just guessing, you know. It'd be great if they bring back the road to the Olympia type of thing. It was like the more like in a modern modernized way. It was like through social media yeah. or through an app or something, so you could follow like like the battle, you know, leading up to the show, like the prep. That was great. That's, I think that's yeah. the best part. And if you can really yeah. follow, Mitsura did a great job at that. Yeah. Yeah, but if you can follow that for like 16, 12 weeks, you can follow your like top five, top ten guys. That makes people more engaged too in the show. Right. I mean, personally, I'd much rather just have a good quality free live stream and no lasers. But <laughs> yeah, I agree. Maybe that's too right. much to ask. <laughs> good lighting. Good lighting. Yeah. Good lighting. Yeah. No good lighting. Smoke. <laughs> lighting. lighting. I, I don't know if you guys saw. I think we actually even spoke about. We, I think we even spoke about what Dave said on Beatty's podcast, Stu, just yesterday. Yeah. Um, when you actually said the whole thing with the Olympia, sort of, you know, when. You always seem to get in a little bit of trouble, Dave, like <laughs> for saying something. And you you had a discussion with Jake Wood and he sort of said that in summary, it was sort of like he like he's happy with, he disagrees with you and he's happy with the way things are currently. Now, mm-hmm. what we spoke about on Beatty's podcast yesterday was the fact that that's not the general consensus from fans. We no. just saw Nick Strength and Power put out a video and he literally put the live stream side by side with the Arnold and the Olympia and right. the Olympia one, which is paid and the Arnold one, which is free. The Arnold one was dramatically better. So there's definitely things for the fans to like, that is going to get a huge amount of fan support. And then we see 200 K up for the winner. We're just like, hell yeah. The Arnold's doing all the right things. Now, whether it's depending what you guys think, the about, Olympia, the Olympia will, things grand, you know, the Olympia is going to announce a higher prize money guaranteed. It'll be 600 grand. I can promise you that. Hmm. Yeah, I can, yeah. I can feel that's coming as well. Cause historically, which is a great, thing. It's a great thing for us. It's a great thing for the sport. It's about time. It's awesome. Yeah. You know, that, that we start making, I mean, I can only speak for myself. I can't imagine if I start tallying up the hundreds of grant of thousands of dollars that I spend <laughs> on my body <laughs> with very, very little return. So uh, imagine not to think about Nick it. And you win twenty five hundred dollars first race, you know. <laughs> yeah. I've done that, it. That's depressing. <laughs> I, I, I know. But imagine like... in the next five years the the, the prize money will be a million dollars, no doubt. Maybe even sooner, yeah. but definitely within that's the next good. five years. And that that's a great thing. Body absolutely yeah. absolutely but to get back to the live stream about the olympia i mean the main thing is just having those late led lights from behind the stage like that's just ruins everything you like that's yeah. the number one the photography you I have you coming from behind the subjects because the main I don't thing know. it's so difficult for them to get it right like that they, they used to do it at the iron man the iron man had sick lighting black backdrop few lights coming out from behind you like simple like this this is literally the most important thing it's... to get right and they yeah always get yeah. it wrong and not just the olympia at a lot of other shows too but it's like this should be priority number one guys for producing yeah. a show get the lights right the backdrop right that's critical yeah. you, yeah. even as an athlete like you don't want to do a show where you do so you work so hard to look your best and then you look on stage and it doesn't translate it's like so frustrating Dude, you have john no big- so your, your comeback show last year, Chicago, that was, I know you were in shape for that, but you didn't look like it. I mean, I know that was bad. <laughs> I know. I know it was, it was pretty bad lighting, but it, ha- like you just said, it happens a, a lot of the shows. I, I just think it's kind of like an afterthought, like you just, you know, get the but stage up, get a your rule, like to have a black backdrop, you know, behind the actors, then you right. can have screens on top of them or whatever you want, but just like, to cover the athletes, or, the black or have ground. or have the greens right, and then shut off any advertisements or whatever is going on as you're doing comparisons or you know doing individual posing routines, and then it's the, be the walks off. You can put whatever you want on the screen again. But it's I got news to you: those those LED screens can go black too if you want to make them black. I'm sure. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can. Yeah. You can. They, I don't know if Iron Man did this purposely or if maybe this is just my imagination, but I remember like twinkle lights, some like in the um, black backdrop. Yes. You, that those looks, black yeah. screen, those screens can do the same twinkle lights. Too. Oh, I know. I mean, yeah, they can yeah. do that. Yeah. I used to love that. And then that, it, that... for the night show, you can put on the, the all the hype and hoopla, but for the pre judging, put yeah. a black screen up there. I agree, hundred percent. Yeah, it's it's not that hard, and and. 
you got to look back at some of the Olympias where Wayne D'Amelio was promoting them. Now, Wayne D'Amelio, I don't think was a great guy to be the head of things from everything I've heard, but you can't deny that the dude put on a show. Like some of those crazy Olympia stages. Now, some of them even were distracting when I've looked back at some of those stages. I'm like, okay, that's, that's a bit, you know, sometimes they'd have like the old like Roman Colosseums and stuff like that. And sometimes you'd see a bit of orange in the background, which I'm sort of always against because it's no, it's not a contrast on the physique. But some of that stuff that they used to do back in the day, like was pretty damn impressive. And that was like back in the nineties. So I think today, you know, like, like all the pros, all the fans, pretty much everyone are saying, just make it black in the background. Or like John said, I think the best way is to have those like little, like twinkle light sort of things in the background, because for whatever reason, that just looks sick in photos. Because then it's just not just black. It's like, well, it's like having a little background without having a background, you know, without looking up in the night sky with the stars in it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, this is, it's obvious what needs to be done here, right? The question is, why has it not been done? It would be cheaper to do it simple and light things properly, et cetera, right? Like, you don't have to buy a big LED screen, whatever. Why is it not changing? Like, is this a matter of like the personalities or the people well, running think- the show? Like, what what is the deal? Because we've been saying this for years, man. I think it's, more I think, honestly, you know, when these are, these are, I mean, listen, we have to be grateful that we have the opportunity to, to to compete on these these stages, right? Like they're these are huge productions. They're not, they're not it takes a lot to organize something like this between the lights and the music and the 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 seating and you know the positioning of the cameras and all that stuff. There's a lot that goes into it. So I think honestly, like I just think it's one of those things that kind of goes it falls by the wayside. Like the production company that they hired to maybe put these things together, they don't know any better. You know, so maybe it takes it's going to take someone to say, you know, hey, you guys need to this is the way you need to set these things up. You know what I mean? And yeah. I don't think there's necessarily someone doing that right now. I just think they hire a company, get the stage up, get the lights up, get the music going, get get the screens up. And that's it. You know, yeah. And nobody no. else than the brothers really need the stage to showcase the physique, like the, the level of details that we want to showcase. So like right. when you have a company that produces other shows, that's not in their mind, you know, that's not really something they, they, they think of. They just want to make it like, oh, that's a great show. There's a lot of stuff going on. And I don't think another thing too is like when they put those screens, it's easier to change and add, you know, new sponsors than if you have to set up manually like old school banners of all the sponsors and stuff yeah. like that. So maybe that's another reason. It may be a lot more expensive at first to buy a screen, but it's easier after that to change it up. And Dan, you just, you just said it right there, the word sponsor. And the stage is set so the sponsors feel like they're getting their money's worth. Right. And so they, they make this magnificent LED backdrop with the sponsors on it and, and Mr. Olympia. And it's really because, let's face it, who's paying for all the – who's paying the bill? The sponsors. So the sponsors have to feel up. And I think you you, you hit it right the head right on the nail. That's that's exactly why the stage looks like it does. It's beautiful. If you just look at the stage, it it's beautiful. It's, it just not, it's just not the best lighting for 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 bodybuilding competition but at the end of the day it's a very expensive production like you said the sponsors have to be happy and i think that's that's the answer well i think that the the problem is that it deters the product and that actually brings everything down instead if you highlight the physique that's what people want to see when they watch bodybuilding you make the the physique shine as much as you can then you can put a screen on top of it and people actually watching because they're like wow this is impressive this looks you know great but if, if the if physics I, here you see what's coming you know what you if should i'm given half a million dollars though as a supplement company i want to see my products on, behind the athlete when, when i'm watching the live stream on tv right you know but, that's, but do, you that's want, a, do you want do you want more people watching it like do you want you people like the, the, the I, hundred I, I, you know or I know you have people watching i'm on your side i'm 100 <laughs> yeah. yeah but how about even like there's so many solutions to it because you could have, I don't know if you guys have it. I'm sure you do in stadiums in America where you have the led advertising that goes around the, all the sort of like the, yeah. the stadiums. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You could have one of those strips across the bottom of the stage when the bodybuilders on turn it down to like 35% opacity. So you can still see their logos across the bottom where we're not really looking at the calves. Let's face it. We're not focusing when we're looking at a physique, we're generally looking mostly from the knees up. So have it across that bottom bit and then 
they can still be seen in the photos, but then if people want to crop it out, I guess they can, you know what I mean? For photos or for media or whatever, without having a million sponsors in the background. But at least then you could have one of these things going across the bottom of the stage where it's got their logos coming up. And I don't think anyone would be too upset with that and have it turned down enough so it doesn't affect the video and the cameras that are taking photos. Because I've, I've done photography, well, not proper photography, but taking photos at competitions. And you know, when there is light behind the competitor, and I've been with, there with photographers, videographers, they go nuts because it's inconsistent lighting. So some photos of the bodybuilders are being slightly bright and some are being under underexposed, underexposed. And it's just, it gives the bodybuilders, it gives the fans, it gives everyone a worse experience at it. It's not as bad at the contest typically, but if you're watching on some sort of video device or photos or whatever, it's going to look shit and you're not going to be able to tell. And most of the fans are not at the event for the Olympia. There's thousands there, but you know, there's so, tens so or better hundreds to of advertise. Thousands. So it's better to advertise on the live stream and actually have the, you know, the commercials, whatever breaks, exactly. you know, can change stuff like that. Then just, than just having all this stuff on stage that nobody really cares to see like the 20,000 logos behind the, the, the athletes. And that actually ruins mm. the whole experience. You know who actually does a really good job of this? Do you got to go? Do you have to go, John? I didn't cut in. Yeah, I got to I got to head out and do some cardio in the next two, three minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No worries, man. Um, what were you saying, Stu? So, so someone who does a really good job of this is like the European shows. Um, they do a good job of lighting things and they also do like crazy stage productions. Like uh, yeah. you guys re remember, I think it was uh, one of the Spain shows last year. Like they had like that rotating thing on the stage and they had like the bodybuilders standing on the carousel. And when they came to the front, they would announce their name, you know, they hit a pose or whatever. Like, why don't we get that here? We get like some high school auditorium shit, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, you know, you know who has, a, has an awesome production? Monster Zim. Have you guys seen their stuff? Their yes. Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. That's Unbelievable. Yeah. Amazing cameras too. Yeah. Yeah. And they've got all those well, camera guys running around with things like going like this and getting all these like cool angles. And it's all like 8K looking stuff, like super crisp. I was like, <laughs> man, if I was a pro, I'd be like, yeah, let's let's do that show. Because that's yeah, you got to make it to Korea, Korea, but... But those, yeah. those angles yeah. are great for the social media posts and all that. But like when you want to watch the show, you want a straight angle. You don't yeah. want anything that crazy, you know? Sometimes. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I don't, I don't sorry, mind sorry. a little bit in the... Sorry, John. Hey, John. Um, let us know. Let us know about your gym, man, as well, because you've obviously got that going on in Florida as well. So give us the address and all the info on that. Sure. Uh, you guys are more than welcome to stop in at twelve two hundred Sunrise Boulevard, Plantation, Florida. The gym is called Fitness System Sawgrass. Uh, we'd love to have you guys come in, have a day pass, get a week pass, get a month pass, whatever it is. We got it all covered. Um, thank you guys for having me on. I appreciate you guys and. I hope to kick some ass next week at the Arnold. Uh, yeah, good luck, John. Good luck. Good you, luck, John. John. We're in for you, man. Take it easy, guys. Hey, man. You're right. Take Bye -bye. care. All right. So do you guys want to get to a couple of questions and we'll wrap this thing up? Sure. Sure. Oh, right. The first one. We've got a few on YouTube here. Um, thoughts on Samson and Raphael and how far apart they are. We've sort of covered that, but what do you guys think in terms of Samson and Raphael? Do, you, do any of you think that Raphael could have won this contest or been awarded this contest he could have i mean i thought Rafael looked amazing i was really really impressed with the look he brought so personally yeah um yeah i, I actually just congratulated neil the other day because i was yeah mind blown i was expecting him to be third but what he brought was a great great music to me yeah it's true um so again like the the thing about samson is he's been the 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 standard has been set like he's placed third at the olympia so like you know if you start if you throw uh rafael over him like who else are you leapfrogging there in that lineup you know like andrew uh maybe even nick i i mean samson's beaten nick before um they seem to not mind uh samson's lack of conditioning so based off of that then i i don't see it happening like i think his muscularity and shape and everything is so overwhelming that you know he's going to continue to to do super well um despite his lack of you know glutes and hams and stuff but so, Rafael, no, i think I, I don't think i they think they only throw your bone so 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 many times i think if he keeps coming in the way he was at this show i think he's going to go down the rankings 
you know, they give you the benefit of the doubt sometimes. I think if he if he continues to mess up, they're not going to reward it anymore. But I, I think that Samson will get better. So I don't think that we're going to have that issue anymore. I don't think we're going to see a Samson like we saw at the Arnold. I think he's going to be significantly better. He's not going to be at his best at this show, but he's going to be significantly better. And don't be surprised if, you know, if the, if it's a tougher battle for Hottie to beat him, you know. So he's remember, Samson's going to be in his own home country there, too. So that that doesn't hurt either. Yeah. But what my point is just is that Rafa, his uh, every pose is solid. He has no one pose that's like uh, you know kind of weak. Every pose is really really strong. So it's, it makes it for a very complete bodybuilder. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, next question. I don't even know how to pronounce that name. It says thoughts on Fuad saying uh, Hardy and Samson are closer than what people think. Um, that's why the judges had them two separated entirely. Now, I, I did hear a little bit of Fuad's podcast and he was saying that he only saw the live stream and he said there must be something he's not seeing as to why they compared them four times. So I think that Fuad by the live stream had Hardy winning, but he said they wouldn't have compared them four times if it wasn't close. So what do you guys think about that? Do you think it was, to me, I thought it was an easy victory. What do you think, Stan? Uh, so I was pretty convinced too, personally. Uh, so how do you, you know, just the look he brought, like the, the waist control. I'm sure you guys talked about it before, but it was pretty amazing. We we didn't uh, go that much into it, man. Like I, one one question, is this Hardy's best ever look? I'll bring up a video of Hardy because yes. I haven't actually featured yes. it. Yeah. 100%. 100%. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. And, and but, um, it's like better and better. Like in 212, you could see he was like really suffering to make the weight and he looked a little like squared, you know? Like exposing his bone structure and like now the the, the extra fullness, extra muscle, he, he's just very round, very complete. There's not missing any body part. Maybe calves a little bit for pretty much the cat, the quads, but <laughs> all that yeah. posing and comparisons between him and Samson that was exclusively for the for the audience. Those yeah, judges knew sick. exactly who they were going to pick. <laughs> they the show was a small show. It was only like ten guys, and there was only three men's classes, three women's classes over two days. They took their time. They gave us our money's worth. They they did a lot of comparisons, which is what the people like. And and but I don't think it was ever an, a doubt in any judge's mind that Hottie was going to win this show. No, hey, it's the Arnold. You gotta you gotta put on a show, right? So keep yep. him up there. <laughs> in, in a way, I was like a little bit disappointed because I always like it when we finish pre judging and then we have no clue who's winning. Like, with the <laughs> I, I, we all love that. We love that it. was fun. That was fun with the Olympia because yeah. you even had some people be like, "Oh, are they going with Samson though? Like maybe <laughs> but they just love the structure. Like, and you can't sort of yeah. tell on the live stream a hundred percent what the conditioning levels are. You can, you have an idea, obviously, but for me, yeah. I, I finished that and I was doing the live stream and I thought, am I being dumb? Because I wasn't listening to the commentary too much. I'd hear the odd thing, but I'm just going off my opinion of what I'm seeing. And sometimes, like when you've got a lot of people listening, you're like. Wait, am I am I messing this up by heaps? But I I left that saying I have no idea who's winning, no clue whatsoever. It was just a real in one in the air. So I understand why they do it for sure. They seem to be really big on this top two call out. It seems to always be a top two call out these days. Do you like that? Does does everyone like that, or do you think sometimes it should be maybe if, if it allows it, it should be three or it should be four or it should be you know whatever. Well. These guys were the closest guys, I think, to each other. That's why it was two. I, we've seen a top three call out. I mean, we had it at the Olympia. So, yeah. I just want to ask um, I'm not hating by any means. This is the best Hottie's ever looked, but I like how we just kind of forgot his delts, you know, because like you can still see <laughs> stuff in there. You know, it's, it's the only thing you can knock on his physique right now, but like we just kind of, for, we, everyone stopped talking about it. You know, it's like it's a trendy subject and then people forget and he looks really good. And I, I just find that funny, you know, I th I think they got marginally better or no. Uh, no, I think, they, they, I, think little... I think he stopped shooting up. So they, they don't look as I mean, they're still not round, but they're they're not yeah. like overblown, I think. And that because I think he stopped shooting them. And I think that's why everyone stopped talking about it. But, you know, watch him move like his his delt is not flexing. Yeah. That's a rock in there. It yeah, always will out. be. It's just, yeah. you know, anybody who does yeah. this knows shit doesn't move eventually if you <laughs> shoot it enough. But I, I don't know. I just think it's funny how, how fans just kind of forget things sometimes. He's the man of the hour. 
Yeah. I'll admit it's sort of down to like a little bit of it's down to who's mentioning what on YouTube and on social media. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like, your fault, bit, Xavier. I know. <laughs> well, I point I pointed out the Delta. I remember I one of the first ones. It was when they were he must have just shot them as well, and it was in the gym, and they they looked horrendous. Like he lifted his arm up, and it was like whoop. And I'm like, mm. if it's like that on stage at all, he is gonna be in trouble. And I just sort of asked the question, and then yeah, it just blew up from there. Now I had a lot of fans and people were saying I was being biased because I didn't mention Samson's pointy delts. That's what people were saying. Now, people have mentioned it and Samson definitely did seem to have a bit more inflammation there. I don't think it's as much of a built up scar tissue issue as it would be for maybe Hardy because I'm sure Hardy doesn't touch his delts at all and you can still see there's there's a, a little bit of raise there. Um, but did you think Samson's delts were at all an issue? No. First I've heard of it, yeah. Uh, no, yeah, not really. <laughs> I just wanted to not be biased because everyone was saying, <laughs> I had a bunch of people, I think it started off as a trend and people were saying, oh, you were being biased and all that sort of stuff. But yeah. well, everyone, anyway, at the end of the day is we, everyone has to, to get their injections, right? So everyone if you to, look, yeah. if you look good enough, you'll find pretty much on anybody some spots. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, the longer yeah. you're competing, yeah, the worse it'll get too. Yeah. And I think there's always like with the judges, there's a little bit of loud there. So if you've got a bit of swelling at the top of your glutes, it's fine. We get it, you know, but if you've got something that's really detracting from your physique, that will look to fans like Synthol, even though we know like when people say Hardy's putting Synthol in his delts, does anyone really hear? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Do people really think that Hardy's putting Synthol in his delts? Like, I don't think anyone thinks that. I Um, think they're just his regular shots. Yeah. It's his regular shots. 100%. I've seen I've seen some amateur body was I remember seeing one specifically that was actually in my state and he came down and competed from another state. I remember seeing his delts and they were like way worse than Hardy's, way worse. And he said, "Oh, well, I just only shot my delts my whole prep." And I'm like, yeah. "What the hell is wrong with you?" And I'm like, "How could you not tell it was going like way way out?" So I think sometimes the, the people best, just the, don't see it yeah. as well. The best the best body part to shoot when you're in prep is your lats, actually, because. You just don't see the lumps in there because it's such a big, long, like mu- uh, very spongy muscle. And uh, I tell people, to, I tell people, leave your delts and glutes alone when you're doing prep. Um, Dennis James, I think he said he he believed he maybe was it Dennis James or someone else said they believe they tore their lat. Maybe it was full out. I can't remember. They thought thought they tore their lat from actually doing shots in their lat. Do you think there's any sort of okay. potential truth to that? I yeah, mean, I hope possible, not. I guess. <laughs> I sure hope not. <laughs> but don't even think about it. It's true. You you tell your lat next time. Well, when, when the tissue, the gets lat hot, muscles are really, really long, very convoluted muscle. It's really would be hard to to damage it that severely just from putting a, a needle into it. I mean, unless you had a ridiculous amount of scar tissue built up in there, that that maybe the scar tissue pulled apart or something like that, you know. But yeah. um, I, I I I don't see that happening. Yeah. You know? But when it's hard like this, like if it gets really, really hard, hard, it's not going to change the, the tension in the muscle. And then you can, right. you know, less weight can create a tear. It's more going to be, it's yeah, not possible. Yes. Written, yeah. But. Now, last question. Uh, Nicolax on YouTube says, advice for my first show and advice for prepping backstage. I mean, advice for your first show. So I'll go to you first, Dave. Obviously, you've prepped a ton of people over time what's your advice for this guy for his first show and i suppose advice prepping backstage because i think a lot of people especially prepping the first time they're like what do i do backstage i remember that was like a question i had when i was first competing i was like what do i do you know what the worst thing you can do is pump up too much backstage and you know you're going back you're carving up for a show because you want the muscles full of glycogen if you're backstage for like and i see some of these guys 45 minutes they're pumping up you're depleting that glycogen out of the muscle and so you're gonna you're gonna be flat so you know, what I tell people to do is just run through your posing until you break a small, like a light sweat, maybe. And then you're ready. I mean, you're pumped up. I mean, there's nothing, you don't really need to do a lot of pumping up. I mean, it's not, it's not going to make you look better. If you're in shape and you have no body fat on you and your muscles are full, you just want to warm those muscles up to get the blood in them. And I think that sometimes you're, you're better off not doing weights or, you know, stuff like that, because you can tear something or you can overdo it and you can deplete glycogen. So I always tell people just pose backstage. What about you, Stan? 
No, that's a good point. I mean, um, the main thing is to remember that why you did that, you know, you work so hard. So now it's time to have fun when, you start, when you're backstage. Don't like overthink, just relax, you know, get ready, have your stuff with you, your food, your supplements, whatever it is. Um, and as far as like regular, like overall prep, like just give yourself enough time. There's no point of like, you know, you've been building for years and now you're doing your first show. It's not time to, no point on trying to rush and lose a lot of muscle. Just take your time slowly. Get rid of the body fat and uh this shows almost every month so you know if you're not ready you know, it's four weeks later it should, should be another one so, <laughs> so don't rush the process you guys have a ton of shows in the us it's not like that here in australia it's like you have like <laughs> comp seasons <laughs> and that's it like two, comp, <laughs> two comp seasons and you're done if you miss it then you gotta you're waiting six months Stu, anything you do special backstage uh not nothing special i'd say just uh try to try to like talk to people and make friends back there because like you know if it's your first show you might get really into this sport like i know all of us did you know and you're going to be around this crowd for the next decade maybe you know you're going to be doing this for a while so like make friends you know get to know people and it is it is a fun environment like you guys can talk about your prep talk about who you are it's like you get you can everyone there does the same thing as you so here's your chance to you know make friends with like-minded people um i made a lot of friends when i did the usa's a couple of years ago now and I, I still talk to them all the time they're they're super cool so yeah be friendly but i think that's a big difference though between like uh, the pros and the amateur is like the first show amateurs people are all super excited backstage they talk they kind of burn out all the energy adrenaline all that stuff's going on and then they're on stage and they're like why do i look like i looked in the gym it's like well you just burn yourself <laughs> out all day long but like, you know, the pros until the finals, you know, just usually before prejudging, <laughs> nobody talks to anybody. Like, or like, I still small... try to do that, like, because it it gets me, it, like, it relaxes me, you know, oh, find somebody I know and just shoot the shit for a little bit, stop thinking about stuff. I like doing that. Yeah. <laughs> some of my, some of my most memorable experiences with bodybuilding is literally backstage, like you said, Stu. I remember like one of them, like Dave, you were actually at this contest. It was the one in Australia that I. Oh did. yeah, 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 and um. And I remember backstage of that contest, there's two guys that I was friends with that were in my division, like from different states that we talked a little bit online and talked during our prep. And I think it was 13 guys in my class. And then us three were top three. So like backstage, they called us out and they said, oh, top three, gave us our three numbers. I'm like, oh, that's mad. And then we're all, you know, talking, joking, having fun. <laughs> and I think we all thought that uh, me and the other guy thought the other guy was going to win because um, his name's Adam Waite because he was like peeled inside out, but it was classic bodybuilding. So they went with me in the end. But I remember seeing him standing backstage and I'm just like, well, look at your fucking glutes. Because he was standing there relaxed and he's just like, tch, tch, tch. <laughs> just one of those guys that just gets inside out. But that whole experience was so fun. Like Aaron Pilates, who who you guys know as well, he mm -hmm. was backstage there and he just won the under 80 kilogram class, which I would say is about 175 pounds. And now he's doing, mm -hmm. you know, 212 and 2019, he was right. top 10 in the world, you know? So it's like, you remember all those experiences and who was there and what are they doing now? And it's, it's super fun. So like you said, Stu, just have fun with it and enjoy it. Cause you're not going to get better by stressing and being pissed yeah. off or like focusing backstage. Like, yeah, you might want to run through your routine or something if you've got a posing routine to do, but, and your poses, but outside of that, like, just enjoy it, you know? Have fun with it. Yeah, that's a crazy experience too. Personally, like you know, personally, I don't talk too much before prejudging, but when it comes to finals, start chatting. Or, you know, the pressure goes down, and uh, you know, like done many shows in men's physique, classic physique, and I've had some great. You know, a lot of time I, I I was traveling by myself. You know, during the shows, so you with other people traveling from anywhere, like any places of, of the world, and also by themselves, and you go eat together, you spend the night, you have some good stories to tell later on. It's definitely a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's so funny with bodybuilding. It's like, it's just those simple things. It's like going to the comp, backstage fun. And then it's like post contest eating. And it's like, but you have the yeah. funnest time though. Cause everyone's in the same mindset. Like everyone's yeah. prepped their asses off and everyone's ready just to go and like binge and eat and, and just everyone's in that same happy mood. So I love it, man. I even love it when I'm not competing. I can just tag along sort of <laughs> for the people that are competing. They're always, you know, generally in pretty good moods unless they're like, I don't know not happy about their placing or something and get too, <laughs> too too caught up on it but yeah anyway guys i'll i'll wrap this up but uh does anyone have anything they want to say or wrap up before we uh wrap this one up nothing special 
Yeah, it'll be a good season, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's, it's going to be a very good, good season. I, I, and, I, I had, I had a very good time at the Arnold. You know, I was glad that I actually went there, and the 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 whole production Arnold production team really rolled out the red carpet for Arcs. But we were like one of the only media websites there covering the show, which was kind of interesting because in the years past, there's always a lot of competition. So they gave us great press seats. We had a lot of good access, and you know, it it reminded me why I loved going to shows in the past because it's it's the energy of the of the whole venue is behind mm-hmm. you and you can just feel it. it's like palpable it's different than when you're watching a live stream and you know what the conditioning was tremendously different in person than it was on looking at the looking back and watching the video hottie was incomparable uh to what you saw in video he was just that grainy freaky hard and i was i was rooting for samson i was i predicted samson would win so um but hottie just blew him away in, in that particular you know comparison so um, I just wanted, like I said, I, I was real happy. I went there and I, I remembered why I love that Arnold show. It's always been a really, really good show. The expo was awesome. It was super fun. There was a lot of people there. And so uh, I had a good experience. So I, I, I highly recommend if you want to go to a show in the future, the, obviously the Olympia is the, the, the Super Bowl, but as far as expos and just general fun, the Arnold is, is definitely right there as well. I get I I got to shake Dave's hand in real life. Yes, which is did. pretty cool. <laughs> we we gave you, I gave you a hug too. Big hug. <laughs> I, I I can't remember if I saw those photos or if I saw photos of you Stu with Milos, but I saw like a million Milos and a million Dave photos from the weekend with different people. Like so many of them. I'm Milos like, had yeah. a photographer posted up next. Yeah, to take the picture. And Milos he always posts like twenty times a day. So yeah. uh, I love. We love yeah. Milos though. 100 percent i've known Milos for so long he's 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 great he, it's great because he's one of those guys when you go to the show and you see him you're like all right great you you, you always expect to see certain people at the show when i see Milos, i feel like everything's okay in the bodybuilding world yeah. <laughs> you're home you can walk up to him and he's gonna have some sort of take about something like you, you know of course he's be he'll have a very strong opinion absolutely you always have chris come here eating some food somewhere <laughs> I, you know, I ran into Chris Cormier at like two in the morning. At, at, imagine that at, at a bar. No surprise. Uh, no surprise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was walking oh back God. to the Hilton, and, and there was a bar right next door. And I looked in, I right through the glass window, and I saw Chris. I'm like, I got to go in there and say hello to him. Victor <laughs> Martinez was there, and you know, oh, that was great. Man. You got the full uh, experience, Dave. You, you, you're I got the full into experience. Mirror, all, you see I only Chris stayed out. for 15 minutes, though. I only stayed. 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, Stu, quickly, I th- I'm sort of a bit remiss. Like, you're obviously prepping for New York. So yep, I'm, I'm how's that all going, man? This year. How many uh, weeks? Good. Uh, t- like, what is it? About 10 now, I think. So still got a long way to go, but I'm on track. And um, it's going to be the first of many shows this year for me. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the whole pro bodybuilding thing, do a bunch of shows finally. <laughs> Never been able to do Dude. that before. Do what Stan did last year. And Stan, yeah. what 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 do you got planned, man? I'm doing Vancouver, Chicago, maybe Dubai, maybe Tampa, maybe Texas. Wow. No, How many weeks out from the first one? Uh 18. 18. Sweet. You've still got heaps of time. So are you I'm just still... starting your prep now or like about to start? No, I'm still full off season, like uh 34 weeks post show. Still straight glutes, everything. So we're not. I was gonna say to... your off season's different, man. <laughs> your off season's different. <laughs> You have to be one of the most shredded guys in your off season. Like Nick was doing that for a while, but you've definitely superseded him in terms of being conditioned. Like how many oh, calories? Yeah. He, started, he started in he started his uh you know in November. I started mine in August, and I'm still <laughs> like that. And it's not like I'm not eating. I'm eating a thousand grams of carbs a day. Like I gain like thirty five pounds. <laughs> So. Yeah, you definitely you, your physique updates are definitely looking impressive, man. So I'm <laughs> I'm hoping that you go one spot better this year and get that Olympia qualification. Hopefully both of you do, like Stu and and, <laughs> and Stan. So anyway, guys, go follow Dave, Stu, Stan, all on social media, YouTube, all that good stuff. The link to the RX Muscle YouTube is obviously in the comments below as well. Um, so go follow those guys. And that's it for myself, Xavier Wills, Stuart Sutherland, Beef Stu, Dave Palumbo, and Stan and Stan Delonju. We are out. Out. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Bodybuilding University. And if you did, give the video a thumbs up, smash that like button, and also subscribe and click the notification bell button. And that's particularly important because this is on a new channel. 
compared to the original desktop bodybuilding channel. Now, both channels will still be running. The original channel will have more bodybuilding news, and this one will have the podcast and interviews. So make sure you subscribe, and if you're not subscribed to the original desktop bodybuilding channel, head over there and subscribe to that as well. Anyway, guys, that's it for this one. For all the guys at Bodybuilding University and myself, Xavier Wills, we are out.